Madeira Archipelago. This group of oceanic islands stretches for more than 250 kilometers in the Atlantic Ocean and is home to some of the most fascinating wildlife on the planet. Nearly two dozen species of whales and dolphins can be found in these waters, including the planet's largest predator, the sperm whale, as well as five of the world's seven species of sea turtles. It was on the island of Madeira that Portugal's first marine reserve created specifically for scuba diving emerged almost four decades ago. The Garajao Natural Reserve is visited every year by thousands of divers from all over the world. Visible from Madeira Island, the steep slopes of the Desertas Islands form a huge protected natural area, which is also one of the last strongholds for the world's rarest seal, the monk seal. Further north, off the sunny beaches of Porto Santo Island, lie some of Europe's most visited shipwrecks. And finally, the Selbagans Islands. The most remote point of Portuguese territory and the largest marine protected area in the North Atlantic, its crystal clear waters are one of the most pristine places on Earth. Overall, the Madeira Archipelago boasts a marine wealth and biodiversity that is difficult to match. But this unique and seemingly healthy ecosystem is actually out of balance. Algae, the basis of our ocean's coastal ecosystems, are disappearing from the coast of Madeira Island. Like these trees in the forest, algae produce oxygen, sequester carbon, provide shelter and habitat, and basically act as the basis of the marine ecosystems in shallow waters. Here in the island, we are not as isolated as one might think. We are all connected by one ocean. In fact, around the world, there's a single body of water that is divided into multiple seas and oceans, but they are all interconnected. Funded Project Climarist is part of Mission Ocean, an international initiative that aims to develop ocean restoration projects across Europe. Madeira was once home for sea forests. Compounding with global pressures like climate change, local human activities have also impacted our habitats. Coastal development, urbanization, pollution and overfishing are amongst the most common impacts to be listed. Overfishing in particular has a specific impact here in Madeira. These local stress factors combined with global warming and pollution have made the population of sea urchins overabundant with plague-like effects. Sea urchins, on the other hand, they feed on algae, which means that without predators, their population can grow without any check. And without check and balance, these populations become a problem and eat most of the algae that settle. They create this habitat called urchin barrens. With the Climarus program, this group of researchers is trying to use science to help bring back the blue forests that are essential to a healthy ecosystem. Our goal is to bring back the algae and restore this function of the habitat so that they can increase biodiversity and the health of the ecosystem. Currently, it is impossible to completely remove the impact from climate change and human pressures. However, we can manage to enhance the recruitment and settlement and growth of these algae and we can also manage to try and control the population of sea urchins that is feeding on them. Researchers recently discovered that the algae are in fact about to have an opportunity to regain ground with a little help from science. In fact, in many places around the world, urchin populations have been affected by a harmful disease with dire repercussions for the health of coral reef systems. 
But in Madeira, this drop in the urchin population will be used by the group of researchers to try to bring balance back to Madeira's waters. With the help of a technology partner from faraway Australia, it will implement a seaweed reforestation program based on structures built in eco-concrete, known as living seawalls. But first, they need to develop an algae production program in the laboratory. Yeah. Well, that one they are growing. They are way more bushy. In the months where the algae are ready, we take some of the algae back to the lab with us and put them in our tanks and wait for them to reproduce which is kind of like a seed planting in your garden. Once we have the tiny algae in the tanks, we try to see which is the best substrate for them to grow on. Starting with the stones that occur naturally on the beaches of Madeira Island. They also test small ceramics used in construction, but the winner ends up being the typical tile found in Portuguese houses, made from clay. It is on these pieces of tile that the algae will grow on for up to three months in ideal conditions at the Marine Organism Stress Simulator until they are finally ready to be transported to their final destination. A living sea wall on the seabed of Madeira. But this is a war between sea urchins and seaweed that has been going on for decades across vast stretches of coastline. And seeing the practical results of this initiative wouldn't be possible without the help of the local population. Through the Climarus project, the thousands of divers who visit these waters every year become scientists for a day. And the data they bring in after each dive will be crucial to monitor the balance of this habitat. We have developed an app that allows dive centers and divers to report specific sightings of species that we consider important. These species can be either important for conservation, can be habitat builders, or they can be pest species that damage local environments. We use these species as indicators to assess the health status of the local habitat. With the Climarus project, we not only want to help bring back the leafy algae, the basis of the ecosystem, to the waters of Madeira, but to create a program to be shared and replicated in other places on the planet, and that helps to bring back the balance in the rocky seabeds affected by human impact. After all, from the Antarctic to the Arctic, we are all connected by one ocean.